I never thought I would be the one to tell you this. Before we begin, I need you to do something. Comment your city name below and tell me, have you noticed anything unusual in the night sky? NASA is quietly tracking reports from civilians around the world, and your observation may be more important than you realize. For decades, I have stood at the frontier of theoretical physics, exploring the nature of reality itself. From the quantum foam that bubbles beneath spacetime to the possibility of parallel universes, I have debated the existence of alien civilizations with colleagues, pondered the Fermi paradox in lecture halls, and mapped out the technological stages of galactic empires. But nothing, and I mean nothing, prepared me for what happened when 3i Atlas crossed into our solar system. You may have heard the name. Perhaps you saw a headline, scrolled past it, thought it was just another space rock drifting through the cosmic void. That is exactly what they wanted you to think. But 3i Atlas is not just another interstellar object. It is not like Oumuamua, that strange cigar-shaped visitor that came and went in 2017, leaving us with more questions than answers. Number three in Atlas is something far more disturbing. And the reason scientists are terrified is not because of what it is, but because of what it did. Let me take you back to the moment we first detected it. It was a cold evening in 2024 when astronomers using the Atlas survey system in Hawaii picked up an anomaly. At first, it appeared to be a comet incoming from the Oort cloud, moving on a predictable trajectory. Standard procedure, log it, track it, move on. But within 48 hours, something changed. The object began to decelerate, not gradually, not in a way that matched any known gravitational influence. It slowed down as if something inside it had fired reverse thrusters. That was the first rule of physics it broke. You see, objects in space do not simply slow down on their own. There is no air resistance, no friction. Once something is moving, it continues moving unless acted upon by an external force. Newton taught us that centuries ago. But 3i Atlas was defying Newton. It was defying everything we understood about inertia, momentum, and the laws that govern motion itself. And yet, there it was, on every telescope feed, every radar scan, decelerating in open space. NASA convened an emergency meeting. I was among those contacted. They wanted answers. We all did. The data was reviewed and re-reviewed. Calibration errors were ruled out. Instrument malfunction dismissed. Gravitational assist from an unseen body. Mathematically impossible given the trajectory. We were left with only one conclusion, and it was a conclusion that no one wanted to say out loud. 3i Atlas was under intelligent control. I remember sitting in that briefing room, staring at the screen, watching the object slow down in real time. My colleagues, some of the brightest minds in astrophysics, sat in silence. Because we all knew what this meant. For the first time in human history, we were not looking at a natural phenomenon. We were looking at technology, alien technology, and it was inside our solar system. Then, the signal started. It was faint at first, a rhythmic pulse, detected across multiple radio frequencies, not random, not the kind of static noise you get from pulsars or magnetars. This was structured, mathematical. It repeated in prime number sequences, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, over and over again. Primes are the universal language. Any civilization capable of mathematics would recognize them. This was a deliberate transmission, a message, and it was coming from 3i Atlas. I will never forget the moment I heard that signal translated into audio. It was not a voice. It was not music. It was a tone, deep and resonant, like the hum of a machine that had been running for a million years. And embedded within that tone was information, patterns, code. NASA's best cryptographers went to work immediately. What they found shook the foundation of everything we thought we knew. The message was a warning, but not the kind of warning you might expect. It was not a threat. It was not an invasion announcement. It was something far more existential, far more terrifying. The message, once decoded, contained a single phrase repeated in multiple symbolic languages, including a visual representation of Earth's position in the galaxy. The phrase, translated as closely as we could manage, read, you are not ready. Not ready for what? That was the question that haunted every scientist in that room. Not ready for contact? Not ready for the truth? Not ready to join the galactic community? Or perhaps not ready to survive what was coming? But the anomalies did not stop there. As 3i Atlas continued its journey through our solar system, it began exhibiting behavior that violated yet another fundamental rule of physics. It changed trajectory without expelling any visible propellant. No exhaust plume. 
no heat signature. It simply altered its course, as if space-time itself was bending around it. Some of my colleagues began whispering about Alcubierre drives, theoretical warp bubbles that compress space in front of an object and expand it behind. But those are purely theoretical. We do not have the energy required to create such a field. We do not have the exotic matter. And yet 3i Atlas was doing it. That was when the fear truly set in. Because if this object, this craft, this probe, or whatever it was, could manipulate space-time itself, then whoever built it was not just ahead of us technologically. They were operating on a level of physics we have not even begun to understand. They were a type 2 civilization at minimum, perhaps even type 3, capable of harnessing the energy of entire star systems, perhaps entire galaxies. And they had sent something into our solar system. Why? I spent sleepless nights running simulations, reviewing the data, consulting with quantum physicists, cosmologists, engineers. We explored every possibility. Was this a probe, a scout, an automated surveillance system, or was it something more ominous? A weapon, lying dormant, waiting for the right moment to activate. Then just as suddenly as it had begun, the signal stopped. 3i Atlas went silent, its deceleration halted. It resumed a ballistic trajectory, coasting outward past Mars, past the asteroid belt, heading toward the outer reaches of the solar system. And then, something even stranger happened. It began to emit light. Not reflected sunlight, not the glow of a comet's coma. This was a blue-green luminescence, pulsing gently, like the breathing of a living organism. Astronomers trained every available telescope on it. Hubble, James Webb, ground-based observatories from Chile to Australia. What they saw defied explanation. The object was changing shape. Its surface appeared to ripple, as if it were made not of solid matter, but of some kind of intelligent liquid metal. Nanotechnology, perhaps, self-repairing, self-organizing adaptive and then it split. Not into fragments, not like a comet breaking apart under gravitational stress. It divided cleanly, deliberately into three smaller objects, each one emitting the same eerie glow, each one altering course independently. One headed toward Jupiter, one toward Saturn, one veered back toward Earth. That was the moment I realized we were no longer alone. NASA imposed a media blackout. The public was told nothing. Observatories were instructed to downplay the fine the official narrative was that 3i Atlas was an unusual but ultimately explainable interstellar comet, nothing more. But those of us on the inside knew better. We knew that humanity had just been visited by an intelligence so far beyond us that we could barely comprehend the tools they were using, let alone their intentions. I began to ask myself the deeper questions. Why now? Why, after billions of years of cosmic silence, after centuries of us scanning the skies with radio telescopes, listening for a whisper from the stars, why did they choose this moment to reveal themselves? Or had they been here all along, watching, waiting, studying us like we study bacteria in a petri dish? And then there is the most unsettling possibility of all. What if 3i Atlas was not the first? What if there have been others, dozens, hundreds, quietly entering our solar system over millennia, observing, cataloging, reporting back to some vast galactic civilization that sees us as little more than primitives, not yet worthy of contact? This brings me to a concept I have discussed many times in my career, the notion of a galactic quarantine. If intelligent life is abundant in the universe, why have we not been contacted? One answer is that we are being deliberately isolated, kept in the dark, protected perhaps or contained, until we reach a certain level of technological and social maturity. 3 I Atlas and its cryptic message, you are not ready, suddenly makes chilling sense. We are not ready, not ready to know that we are not the apex of intelligence, not ready to face the reality that our entire history, our wars, our philosophies, our religions might be utterly insignificant in the grand cosmic scheme, not ready to accept that consciousness itself might not be unique to us, that artificial intelligence, biological evolution, and something entirely beyond both might be woven into the very fabric of the universe. I think about the future. If 3i Atlas is a scout, then what comes next? Do we prepare for contact? Do we build defenses? Do we reach out with open arms? Or do we hide, hoping they lose interest and move on? These are not questions for scientists alone. These are questions for all of humanity. But here is what troubles me most. The object that returned toward Earth, the one that split off from 3i Atlas. Where is it now? NASA has gone silent on its location. Civilian astronomers who try to 
track it report their data being scrubbed, their access revoked. There are whispers, rumors circulating in private academic channels that it entered Earth's orbit, that it is still here, watching. I cannot confirm this. I can only tell you that the silence is deafening. Every night I look up at the stars and I wonder, are they out there looking back? Have they already made their judgment? Are we a species worth saving? Or are we simply another evolutionary dead end, destined to destroy ourselves before we ever leave our cradle? And I think about consciousness. What is it really? Is it an emergent property of complex neural networks? Or is it something deeper, something woven into the quantum field itself? If an alien intelligence has mastered mastered space-time, have they also mastered consciousness? Can they read our thoughts, our intentions, our fears? Are we, in some incomprehensible way, already connected to them? These are the questions that keep me awake. These are the questions that I believe 3i Atlas was designed to provoke. Because perhaps the message was not just a warning. Perhaps it was a test, a challenge, to see if we could decode it, to see if we could resist the urge to panic, to weaponize, to retreat into tribalism and fear, to see if we were capable of unity, of wisdom, of stepping into the cosmos, not as conquerors, but as students. I do not have the answers. No one does. But I do know this. 3i Atlas has shattered something fundamental. Not just a rule of physics, but a rule of perception. We can no longer pretend that we are alone. We can no longer ignore the possibility that our existence is part of a much larger story. One that has been unfolding for billions of years across trillions of stars. The question now is not whether we are ready. The question is whether we will choose to become ready. Because they are watching. And I suspect they have been watching for a very long time. Follow this channel as we continue decoding the universe's final warnings. What comes next may determine not just the future of our species, but the future of consciousness itself. So I leave you with this. If an intelligence far greater than ours sent a probe into our solar system, broke the laws of physics before our eyes, and delivered a message saying we are not ready, what do you think they are waiting for? What would it take for humanity to prove that we are? Comment your thoughts below. The universe is listening.